Hey, you watch 100 Mile Drive and today I wanted to answer a biggest question I had for a long time. Is this 2023 Toyota Highlander Hybrid a bulky, boring SUV with a four-cylinder buzzing engine or is it actually a solid, capable machine that is enjoyable to drive? Let's find out. And if you watch 100 Mile Drive for the first time, well, this is the channel where I say, before you buy that car, sign that contract, make sure to rent it for a day and drive it on city streets, highway and canyon roads to answer the biggest question I'm answering on this channel is how does it feel to drive? And for the first time on this channel, I'm gonna do two giveaways, each worth $100 and I'll wire it like via PayPal. All you need to do is subscribe to this channel, like this video, this Toyota Highlander video, and leave a comment below. And I'll give more information in my future videos. And I'll do this giveaway once I reach 1,000 subscribers. And that's my thank you to you, as I'm gonna do a lot more giveaways on this channel, as I wanted to make something more than just me reviewing cars. Now let's get into this video. All right, now let's quickly talk about exterior of the 2023 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. And the front looks pretty good, actually. It, I would say this car is more likable to more people than let's say Toyota RAV4, as that is a more rigid crossover that some people like and some people hate. Now this Highlander is an XLE trim. It also came with this bronze wheels, which I personally don't like, but it's literally just, you know, your choice, your taste. Some people are gonna like them, some people are not gonna like them. And overall, the Highlander looks nice. Like I said, it will favor more people. If this is the car you're looking for, a three-row SUV, then most likely you're gonna like it. Now let's quickly do a door sound check before we head out. And these doors are pretty heavy. Sometimes I have to slam them, especially when I'm inside, closing the door. So the door sound check passed. Now let's get in the inside. All right. And now we're inside 2023 Toyota Highlander Hybrid. And this is what the interior looks like overall. So a couple of points here. Now I did a review on Toyota RAV4 Hybrid and kind of mentioned some of the materials like a hard plastic. Already had some scratches in the brand new car. This car is also brand new. It has only a few thousand miles. But I feel the materials here are a little bit nicer than in the RAV4. The only thing I see like this panel kind of moves a little bit. I don't think it'll rattle, you don't have any creaks, but I think it could have been a little bit more solid. A lot of such touch, soft touch materials here, soft touch, I really like this area. It's very nice, you can put your cell phone, you can put a lot of stuff, there's a wireless pad here. Uh, overall, not bad, some hard plastic here, but it looks pretty solid. Some soft materials here, so overall, the dash looks nice, kind of like it. This one has a $735 option, the 12.3 inch screen. Uh, it, it's an added option, doesn't come standard with XLE trim. Now, the funny thing is about the seats. These seats, to me, looks like they're like seat covers. I don't know why I feel that way, but they kind of okay, but you see some fake leather on the sides and then there's some cloth inserts in the middle. Uh, they look okay, but somehow I expected them to be a little nicer. But overall, it's not bad. Overall, I like the cabin. It's a very nice, spacious, and pleasant to be place to be in. Now, let's go ahead and drive it. Okay, driving 2023 Toyota Highlander in the city. I'm going to put it in sport mode. First, we're going to talk about acceleration. Now, let's go ahead and try it. And there we go. All right, so... Immediately, I want to answer the biggest question I had from the start. Is this that drony engine, right? That small four-cylinder paired with two electric motors combined 243 horsepower. How does it feel, actually, this engine, right? Well, before I answer that, let me do one more. Let's go ahead and stop the stoplight. Full stop. And let's go. We're in the sport mode. All right. We're going. Off we go. Okay. So... Here's the thing, um, it's not bad, okay? I don't even wanna use word acceptable. I wanna use word adequate, okay? It's totally adequate for what this car is. And I already spent with this car more than 50 miles. I already drove it a little bit yesterday, someday, sometime today. So I already, I already kinda gathered all the data, so I already kinda know how this car feels. So it's gonna be easier for me to actually translate to you. All right, one more. Uh, we're gonna do one more lunch. Let's let the Prius go. And we're just gonna do one more quick lunch and talk about it more. All 
right? Now this car is front wheel drive. This is I want to address really quickly, immediately. If you can get all wheel drive, I think all wheel drive is a huge bar bargain, especially if you're keeping this car long term. Like a lot of people say, no, I don't need all wheel drive. But even if you're not gonna hit the snow, uh, get this. Like a lot of times when you want to do a quick takeoff, uh, let's say you, you know, you you making a right turn and you need to immediately accelerate with front wheel drive which I already experienced in this car uh, you get the little wheel speed not only it's not a good feeling also you kind of lose that little bit of traction so you're not going as fast as you want it to go so it's kind of like a down especially also like if it rains in rainy weather all wheel drive again even if you're not going to snow if you're not going to really use all wheel drive or off-roading it's still very handy and it makes the car feel more like stable, more responsive. It makes the car feel more drivable. That's just it's something I observed. And now the X3 that we got of, as our own car, X3 M40i, of course is all wheel drive and absolutely love that. So acceleration in this car is adequate. It's not super fast, it's not acceptable. I, I honestly felt this is gonna be a lot slower, but it's pretty adequate. Now car and driver says it's 7.3 seconds. Uh, even though when I looked further, like what uh, other channels like Motor Trend and all tested, some say eight seconds, some even say fast, uh, slower. But to me, this does feel like this can be uh, below eight seconds, and it's adequate because this is a fairly enough power. I mean, you're not supposed to drive this car like a maniac. You're not supposed to like floor it every time. But from get go, if you need to, you know, quickly accelerate, it has power. Even though it's a, that four-cylinder droning CVT transmission, but I can tell how over the years Toyota refined it better. Like my initial 2011 Camry Hybrid was 9.2 seconds, zero to 60, and that felt slow. That felt like that was like a don that honing sound. Now this is far more uh, drivable, far more, in, uh, far more adequate, I would say especially for this size this is a pretty unique car right where you can get a three row suv and at the same time you can get you know a hybrid that is 36 miles per gallon the other thing i want to quickly talk about is brakes in this car and this is something i didn't 100 percent like where if let's say acceleration i said was adequate but brakes in this car feel a little mushy like the rav4 hybrid that we recently drove had much better more uh, gradual kind of uh, smooth brakes now this car uh, the brake pedal feels a little uh, heavier and when you press you have to press it harder um, and then it feels a little mushy it's not a downer it's not like bad or something I would completely not like it's okay I just I was just thought I just thought it would be a little bit smoother than what it is so brakes are kind of uh, okay they, they feel strong though they feel fairly strong for this car another thing I see Toyota refine over the years is how balanced a lot of the things that they did in this car like I drove all the Toyota products let's say seven years ten years ago and they all felt wobbly they all felt out of you know place I would say like when you accelerate your steering would be like jumping all around like there'll be a massive torque steer in front wheel drive cars the suspension was wobbly like I complained so much about the steering was loose and that's all fixed that's all not the case now I'm personally driving like it, it was a big question for me like how these modern Toyotas drive and I'm quite surprised to note that they drive far better far more refined far more balanced and now as we're talking about balance let's talk about suspension right how does suspension feel in this car now we'll talk about steering now suspension on the, in this car obviously is more on the softer side this is a soft smooth car you know for a lot of people who have their families or you want to do long trips so obviously this is the car for that right but um, we still want to know how do they feel to drive and suspension in this car while it's on a softer side smoother side uh, I really like how balanced it is I was hitting a little bigger bump there um, so 
suspension here is fairly balanced like uh, yesterday when I drove the car I'm going to take it to Canyon Rose to show it to you uh, you know when you throw this car left right when you try to uh, you know go faster slower suspension is nicely responds to anything you want to do it's obviously not a sport suspension but the body even though it shifts left right it's pretty well planted for the fact that this is a softer suspension the car doesn't do this leaning and there's no that you know kind of falling where basically you feel uncomfortable no this car responds pretty well and now I'm on the Tampa Avenue where I'm gonna drive on some of the beat-up road and talk a little bit more about how does it respond to the bumps and dips and here let's see basically you can say it's not a sophisticated suspension it's a fairly simple soft damping so it soaks them pretty well but it doesn't soak them in like a let's say BMW X7 type where it will be a bit sophisticated where it'll glide uh, over the bumps here it just kind of responds to them um, but the fact that it's a soft setup, uh, it just observes them pretty well. So don't expect anything like sophisticated or anything that feels nice where you wanna hit all those bumps. But nevertheless, it has a nice soft dampening, uh, which is right for the segment, right? Which is fairly uh, acceptable for the segment. And it, like I said, it's a pretty pleasant car to drive, even on these bumpy roads, on these uh, little small potholes imperfections it doesn't smoothen them out in a way like I said where it feels refined and a little bit sophisticated this is not x7 this is not even Acura MDX but it it's a nice damping uh, where uh, it responds to them in a very soft pleasant way now let me jump into these local uh, neighborhoods these local streets this is what I like to do we'll talk about steering and the maneuverability of this car now obviously we're dealing with the big car here right this three row uh, seats car by the way there's a Grand Highlander that's coming out just got released in Chicago Auto Show which is even taller than this you know longer than this vehicle and um, how does this car steer so that was another thing that surprised me now you can see me steering like left and right now it's a it's a lighter steering uh, it is still weighted it is still nicely weighted but it's on the lighter side but what I liked about the steering and suspension is basically how they you know work together in this you know duet is that both are light both are you know smooth and uh, the car responds very nicely so uh, the suspension nicely follows it balanced like I said the car doesn't doesn't uh, have those moments where it would feel unsafe or where it would feel like even at the little faster speeds uh, obviously we're not talking about performance here right we're talking about general safety general feel like like uh, what is it you know how does Toyota deliver that uh, and what are the improvements that I'm seeing over the years and like I said Toyota mastered that fact that they deliver these smooth cars that are pleasant quiet right and at the same same time they're safe they're really safe and yes you can drive fast this car although it's definitely not meant for that this is not a car you want to drive fast uh, but it responds really well like I said the the balance in this car uh, it's amazing it's uh, it is balanced you know and then uh, like I understand what the car is doing I'm getting uh, feedback and the feedback from steering the feedback from suspension is is really nice actually it's far better than what I expected to be honest with you and obviously you can feel that you dealing with the longer you know there's a longer tail so per se and the tail does follow the car right and that's where cars like x7 they're a little bit better in managing how they move that platform through the corners they are more pointy than this uh, hybrid uh, cam I mean the Camry why I see that Highlander but nevertheless Highlander delivers really well in terms of suspension uh, in terms of steering and fairly adequate acceleration so the 
if I want to summarize it in one word, I can totally say that this car is balanced. It's very well balanced. It's safe to drive. Uh, it's enjoyable to drive if this is the type of driving style that you like. All right, and now let's go drive it on the highway. And now we're entering a highway. Uh, I'm again in a sport mode. Let's say we just want to see again how this engine does. The two electric motors. All right, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's pretty adequate. I mean, one thing I'll say for sure, let's say if you have like seven passengers, then you're going to feel this. You're definitely going to feel the weight, you know, that this engine uh, will feel the weight. Uh, otherwise, there's a slight torque steer. That's again, because I was going uphill, uh, and then the weight shifted a little bit backwards in acceleration so that the front wheels lost a little bit of grip. And that's exactly why I say you kind of want to have all-wheel drive vehicles so that way it'll always feel proper. Like it'll feel like you don't have any issues with you know any kind of slippage. Now the first thing I want to talk about here on the highway like is this a cruiser, right? Uh, is this car a cruiser? And obviously it is. This is exactly what it is. You have all your you know friends or all your kids like basically your family all with you uh, you're all driving you know going for a long trip and especially this car being hybrid with 36 miles per gallon average this car will do absolutely well uh, it's just nice and pleasant to cruise and it has adaptive cruise control standard which is amazing what Toyota has and then it's just the perfect cruiser you just follow the car and then just cruise now the other thing we want to quickly talk about is the sound insulation right how is the sound insulation and uh, this car is a little tall so you can feel let's say at the higher speeds you can feel the wind kind of wrapping around the cabin um, it's not excessive but it's noticeable it's something you will notice um, and it's it's not bad it's not bad um, but let's say car, more premium cars of this day, uh, like a Acura MDX that I was able to test drive, but maybe I'll bring it on the channel, or BMW X7, which are much more expensive cars, then that's where they do better job in insulating their cabin. Uh, but again, it's not bad. It's very acceptable. Uh, it's not bad. Now let's quickly look at the meter to see what are we reading here. Let's say we're driving at the bar around 65, and when we're getting, Not bad, we're getting about 65 on average, 65. That's the decibel. So pretty much all the cars that I'm measuring, they're pretty much averaging around the same, maybe because they're all crossovers, I don't know. Um, like I said, again, the sound installation is not the best, but it's not the worst, it's somewhere in the middle. Now, the mixed thing, let's quickly try to overtake some cars. Let's see the car in front of me and then see how the mid-range power works, right? Is it adequate? Um, and it is, it is. It's obviously not super fast, but one thing I want to mention again, how balanced this car is, despite having a soft suspension, is that even at the higher speeds, this car stays pretty well. Like it's easy to hold it in the lane. Uh, you don't feel worried that you have to like, you know, keep the steering, you have to be engaged like some of the cars. And even if you're gonna be driving on a little bit beat up, uh, you know, roads on the highway, it's gonna be easy to hold this car in the lane. So I noticed that, and I really like this commanding view from here. You know, the sculptured hood. I really like that. Um, and overall, it's a very pleasant cabin. You know, so you're gonna have a great time driving this vehicle for a long journey. Now I can also mention that I think. I think, I haven't reviewed minivans yet, but I think this car feels smoother than the latest Toyota minivan hybrid. Uh, my brother has one and I rode with him as a passenger, I didn't drive it, but it felt a little bit more uh, bumpy. Uh, to me, I think this Highlander yeah, feels a little bit more softer, like a little bit smoother. So once again, very pleasant car to drive on the highway. Now let's take it on the canyon roads and talk more about the stability and how sus uh, well suspension engine brakes respond when we put them a little bit more to the stress all right all right driving 2023 toyota highlander hybrid on the canyon roads it's gonna be a quick ride just to show how this highlander drives 
basically if we put a little bit to the stress kind of to demonstrate the suspension and how safe it is like I mentioned you should bring a car to the Canyon Rose to see if the car is actually safe in general so you get a better feel you understand better how this car handles and let's talk immediately about suspension so they obviously already drove on these roads um, so what happens is when you try to go through these turns you can start hearing your tires so the car kind of tells me it's not very happy you know me going at the little faster speed nevertheless remember I said the car is fairly well balanced so what I'm happy to say that despite this being a softer suspension setup uh, it holds pretty well I mean you can feel that balance that because even though it leans you know into the corner uh, when you take you know a turn it still holds pretty well like you still feel uh, safe obviously we're not pushing this car to the limit we're not trying to you know take this corner super fast we just want to see how does the chassis do and the chassis responds pretty well and I'm happy to say that that's amazing now as far as the throttle like the acceleration the engine obviously is is, is good for what it is like I said it's pretty adequate so no problem there uh, and with CVT transmission in sport mode it's fairly responsive it's fairly responsive and honestly I'm kind of even having some fun with this car I mean for what it is I mean it's doing pretty well and like even when it starts to understeer I can at least get that feedback I can feel what it's doing and I can feel that understeer so so it's pretty good overall now my only complaint driving this car on the canyon roads uh, and not just canyon roads and I mentioned that before is brakes the brakes a little mushy so obviously when you are in distress let's say uh, let's take the corner when I have to press the brakes there is a delay there's a slight delay and then it grips so it's probably something to do with the hybrid setup um, in the RAV4 hybrid I didn't see that issue a RAV4 hybrid uh, felt much better um, than this I mean it's something you kind of get used to but I'm hoping that something Toyota will refine um, I guess in maybe future models but otherwise will this car take on the dangerous situation if somebody breaks in front of it absolutely it can yes um, it, even though it has a light steering even though it has a softer suspension setup uh, I clearly understand what it's doing I clearly understand when it's losing traction for example and so far the speed I've been driving at it hasn't been losing any traction and if you have all-wheel drive it's gonna be even better so I can say I, I like that I understand what's happening in this car uh, despite not being a performer despite being a normal cruiser uh, driving it here in Canyon Roads uh, I kind of feel this car better now I can feel I can understand what it's doing uh, I understand steering better now I understand the speeds where this car can start understeer and uh, if somebody breaks in front of me I have better chances now to overcome that dangerous situation so I hope that helps uh, and like I said you know make sure to rent a car for at least a day and then spend time with it drive it on city streets highway and bring it to Canyon twisty roads not necessarily Canyon roads but somewhere where you can take some turns you can experience the steering the brakes you know transmission uh, and that will tell you if this is the car you truly want I hope you like this and let me summarize this real, really quickly what I think about this car and what is my final field score alright so now that I completed driving this car on city streets highway and canyon roads this is the time for me to give it a final verdict and here's what I would like to say if you didn't know this car is pretty unique with the fact that this is the only car that offers three rows this kind of size and it's a self-charging uh, hybrid it's not a plug-in it's a self-charging hybrid the only other car that is similar kind of is a Kia Sorento that has a three-row seating and is also hybrid but it's still smaller in size compared to this Highlander so now how does it feel to drive well it feels pretty good I mean for people who shopping for such cars they are looking obviously for comfort 
uh, and that's what this car offers but at the same time it does offer safety and balance so the balance is what comes in my mind that for what it is for how it's set up for how it's tuned Toyota did a great job refining it to the point where it does feel safe to drive for this class and if you ask me what is my final fuel score well my final fuel score is gonna be 7 out of 10 I'm giving it some credit uh, I, I love what Toyota engineers did in this car uh, it was really enjoyable experience this is the car I spent the whole day filming making this video uh, also driving with my wife uh, well over 100 miles and I'm not tired I'm still feeling good and and this car delivered that it has great seats it has great comfort in suspension it has everything that I needed uh, everything I wanted to see plus added balance and I saw that on the Canyon Roads as well so I hope you liked this review if you did hit the like button subscribe to this channel your support will be greatly appreciated and let me know what other cars you want me to review on this channel and talk to you soon hey I wanted to show this real quick if you're buying this car make sure to get PPF installed basically a clear bra clear film because look how easily this car's paint gets chipped very easily I mean this car only has a few thousand miles and then I saw two here one here little thing so make sure to get a clear bra and you'll be good to go